set time to be holy. Speak up with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitted for service aboard. We give you glory and praise. We worship you, God, for your loving kindness. Thank you, precious Father, for the opportunity given to us to be here this morning. We are asking, Lord, to speak to us. We depend on you. We have no power of our own. We have no wisdom. We have no might. But all come from you. We ask you release your grace of understanding to every one of us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bind every stronghold of darkness. Come against itching ears. Come against spirit of disturbance, distractions. I rebuke this morning in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. For this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. This morning, as I said, we are taking the first message, seeking God's face for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We know, of course, that all these come from the Lord. Wisdom, knowledge come from God. Wisdom is great. Wisdom is powerful. Wisdom has so much to do with our daily activities. It has so much to do in our family life. It has much to do even in our careers. Wisdom is very, very important to everyone that God has created upon the face of the earth. Talking about the issues of searching or seeking for God's grace, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, we are simply saying that this concerns life because you need daily wisdom, you need daily knowledge, and daily understanding. A relationship with one another this wisdom this knowledge is great and also brings about reputation relevance in this contemporary world and also the Christian community these godly giving virtues are required in enhancing deliverance and also development so we are simply establishing here this morning that without wisdom knowledge and understanding you cannot be efficient you cannot have good relationship with people you cannot be relevant in this world and also in the christian community then also it is godly great vision that god has given to man and this is required in every aspect of humanity 
like in James chapter 1 verse 4 the Lord, the Bible said but let patience have a perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him this is God speaking to us that if any man lack wisdom if any man lack knowledge if any man lack understanding he should ask from the Lord and I believe that in this conference we have come to seek the face of the Lord and anyone that sought God's face will surely be granted and shall be given so i trust that by the grace of god we all will be so humble before the lord to seek for this wisdom to seek for this knowledge to seek for this understanding in proverbs chapter 2 from verse 1 proverbs chapter 2 from verse 1 my son if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart on if thou criest understanding if thou seeket her as silver and searcheth for her as for he treasures then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. He led up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. So you see the description of wisdom, of knowledge, of understanding that this is required in man for a man to have a balanced Christian life you must He lacks knowledge. So it's very important for every one of us to seek this wisdom. Just as the Bible said, if we incline our hearts, incline our ears unto wisdom, your ear must be prepared to be anointed with the grace and the spirit of what wisdom. That you hear a word and know how to respond you hear well from your ears then again apply the heart to understanding you prepare your heart to receive the grace of understanding that when somebody is talking you'll be able to understand to follow exactly what is happening around you then again you go after knowledge you lift up your voice for understanding if you cry for knowledge, God will give. If you cry for understanding, God will give. And you will seek this wisdom. Seek this understanding. Seek this knowledge. As somebody seeking for wealth, somebody requesting for money, how to make money in life. If you have the same ability to seek wisdom, knowledge with this pattern, God said he will give to you. And I know that God will give to every one of us. And he said, this will also bring understanding. That is, through the fear of God, understanding will come. Through the knowledge of God, understanding will come. That means, 
if any man wills to find out, to dig deep into the word of God, into the spirit of God, to find out this wisdom, part of God's understanding of wisdom, God will give. You dig hard to also request God to give to you this wisdom. God will give to you. It's a hidden treasure. Wisdom is hidden treasure. Knowledge is hidden treasure. Understanding is hidden treasure. Not every man has understanding. Not every man has wisdom. Not every man has knowledge. That means it is hidden and is only exposed and given to those who are ready to dig deep into the word of God, to discover knowledge, to discover understanding. If you don't seek it, if you don't pray for it, if you don't ask God for it, you cannot obtain wisdom. You cannot have wisdom. So wisdom is very, very important to every human being upon the face of the earth. The Bible says the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth and causeth knowledge and cometh knowledge and understanding. So you find that this same wisdom comes from the mouth of the Lord. Proceed from the mouth of God. Knowledge proceed from the mouth of God. With knowledge, I mean understanding also proceed out of the mouth of God. And how do we exercise wisdom? How do we exercise knowledge? How do we exercise understanding? All come from the heart and through your mouth. All come, wisdom come out of your mouth. And when you speak, they say, yeah, this man has wisdom. When you speak, say, yeah, this man has knowledge. When you speak, say, yeah, this man had what? Understanding. So it comes from your mouth, just as it comes from the mouth of the Lord. So when you speak, wisdom is noticed. When you speak, knowledge is noticed. When you speak, understanding is noticed. If you talk to two or three persons, maybe on the same matter, or the same subject, you'll be able to know who has wisdom, who has knowledge, who has understanding. Because you are able to talk to people at the same time and they listen to you and they respond. And when they respond, you will be able to do what to not design. The one that has wisdom, the one that has knowledge, the one that has understanding. So it's very, very imperative for every child of God to seek for what? Wisdom, seek for knowledge, and seek for understanding. So God expects every one of us to seek for out this wisdom. And he said, lay up sound wisdom. There's what is called sound wisdom. There's also what is called wisdom. But there's also what is called sound wisdom. And also, for the righteous, he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. So if you have sound wisdom, there's a shield. Wisdom shields you. Wisdom covers you. Wisdom protects you. Wisdom will not allow you to be destroyed immediately. Wisdom will protect and guide you. Why? Because you know how to talk. You know how to say things out of your mouth. Why? Wisdom is working in your life. So we also trust in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. The Lord said, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Now, for everyone that asked, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. So you discover that God says, seek. We must all seek wisdom. We must seek for knowledge, seek for understanding. God requires us to seek for all these things. These are golden virtues. These virtues in man promotes man, gives honor to man, elevates man. If you are a man with low understanding, you are not knowledgeable of things, you behave like a foolish man. If you don't have wisdom in some issues that come to you, you behave like what a foolish man. Why? Because they look at you and say, this man does not have wisdom. Look at the way he dressed, look at the way he behaved, and in fact, this man does not have wisdom. So wisdom speaks wisdom speaks at any time so let's apply the grace of seeking god said knock 
and it shall be open to you when you seek you shall find and i trust that we all will seek for wisdom and knowledge in jesus name in matthew chapter 21 verse 21 matthew 21 verse 21 and jesus answered and said unto them verily i say unto you if you have faith and that not you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree but also if you shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea it shall be done in all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer believing you shall receive praise the lord so you find here that god is also requesting us to ask to request just as have mountain you have problem surround you and you speak to the problem <clears throat> you speak to god oh lord take charge of this situation god answers you and when the answer comes you are happy the same thing god requests every man to see for wisdom you don't just pray for only those that are sick only those that are troubled but yourself you must pray for what wisdom wisdom is a praise pattern and the greatest in a man is to obtain wisdom and wisdom means deliverance from sin wisdom liberates you from sin wisdom help you to depart from sin and that is the greatest wisdom for a man to depart from sin and foolishness so if i able to understand that god required man to live a life of wisdom a life of understanding god will be so pleased to have us around him that yes we have obtained wisdom now let's look at isaiah chapter 11 isaiah chapter 11 reading verse 2 and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord so number three said again i shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the lord and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes neither reprove after the hearing of his ears wisdom counts so when we obtain this grace through seeking the face of the law to have this wisdom to have this knowledge then the spirit of wisdom will come that means the spirit there's a spirit of wisdom there's a spirit that controls knowledge there's a spirit that controls understanding and when we pray and ask god for the spirit of understanding for the spirit of wisdom for the spirit of uh, knowledge then god will release upon us even a pastor in the church needs wisdom the pastor needs understanding the pastor also needs knowledge to be able to pastor well to be able to lead the people well any church that does not have a pastor with understanding and wisdom you see crisis upon crisis little matters he can't handle them there's always problem why because there's no wisdom there's no knowledge there's no understanding he does things as he pleases whatsoever that comes his mind that is what he will do he doesn't consider anything why he lacks wisdom he lacks knowledge he lacks understanding and god said the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him he will rest upon you as a pastor he rests upon you as a man of god he rests upon you as a brother he rests upon you as a sister every one of us here the spirit of the lord will rest upon you in jesus name the spirit of wisdom will rest upon you in Jesus' name. The spirit of knowledge will rest upon you in Jesus' name. The spirit of understanding will rest upon you in Jesus' name. Where you have made mistake yesterday, a handling some matters, 
after this conference that wisdom will come back to you and you are going back to handle that matter again and that wisdom will come upon you and you are going to conquer that problem in jesus name so god said the spirit of counsel will come it's good to give good counsel some don't know how to give good counsel rather they want to give wrong counsel to please themselves to please the people no in the face of cancer you don't please anybody you give the right counsel the right judgment the rightful judgment be applied to you i mean to those things around you. why because of the spirit of wisdom you have so wisdom will direct you the discretion of wisdom will lead you to know what to say to know how to reply anybody around you and many of us are suffering from this spirit of lack of wisdom lack of knowledge lack of understanding and i pray that god will use grace upon our lives in jesus name we are considering this topic under the following points number one the wisdom two knowledge and three understanding it is on a, talking about wisdom it is one of the godly virtues god blesses man with the quality of being wise intelligence drawing on experience and governed by prudence wisdom is a faculty of knowledge through its through it people could be impactful wisdom is one of the godly virtues god blesses man with just as blessed them with faith so wisdom is one of the virtues that god has leads upon men the quality of being wise that wisdom the quality of being a wise man or woman you have that quality of being wise that when you speak oh this is a wise man this is a wise woman it also brings intelligence that is this intelligence being drawn from the experience you have gotten the experience you have gotten this brings about the wisdom to you and also govern you when the wisdom is in your life it governs you it helps you it directs your path it directs your feet why because you have obtained wisdom you have obtained knowledge so knowledge is also the ability to do things without committing sin while applying that knowledge because you can give counsel but in the, in the, in the course of counseling you can also put some evil things so some evil seed while you are counseling people just for instance some people want to marry young people want to marry some counselor with sellers will tell them the man must buy a full bag of clothes for you the man must fill one big box of clothes for you the man must buy a car for you the man must do this for you if you don't do that do not accept this marriage wrong cancer wrong cancer many are suffering from that and because of wrong cancer even young men i want to marry they can't marry because either the pastor the pastor's wife or the others or the marriage committee they will put a lot of bodies upon the young men and upon the young women and because of that they became afraid to go into marriage why wrong cancers have been causing a lot of problem in the churches today let's look at Acts chapter 6 Acts chapter 6 verse 3 wherefore brethren looking at among you seven men of honest report full of the holy ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business but we give our, we give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word now this in the church we also request that in our churches let there be honorable men of good report men of wisdom 
men of knowledge, men of good understanding, be appointed over offices. Over offices, those with discretion, with knowledge, with understanding, those that are alive will be a blessing to others. Let's appoint them. The apostle saw there is a problem in the church. And he said, if we keep taking care of everybody, there's going to be a problem. We are going to crash land. So the best thing is to appoint men. And he said, look you among yourselves. Who can be in this position? And they were able to choose some men of wisdom. May God make you one of those wisdom people. May God make one of those knowledgeable people. May God make one of these understanding men and women in the church. That men can think about you. Men can rely on you. Men can come to you for counsel. Men can say, my brother, I need a counsel in this matter. And you give them right counsel in Jesus' name. So God expects us to have this. Now, in the issue of wisdom, we have two kinds of wisdom. The wisdom called the godly wisdom. And we also have the one called the sensual wisdom, which is the worldly wisdom. The, the, the godly wisdom is always productive wisdom. It's a wisdom that brings grace, peace to the heart that receives it. Let's look at James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Reading verse 15. Then, when lost has conceived, he bringeth forth sin, and see when is finished, bringeth forth death. Now, verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of light, with whom is no very variableness, neither shadow of turning. Now, because God want us to come to this knowledge of understanding God expect us to stand fast now coming back to verse 4 and verse 5 but let patience have a perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraided not, and it shall be given him. If anyone lack wisdom, now if there's sin in the heart, man will not see for wisdom. If there's sin in the heart, you will not go for wisdom because you know your ways, you have perverse ways. And it will affect your wisdom, and that become worldly wisdom. Wisdom that does not bring the glory of God. So if we have the wisdom of God, then our wisdom becomes profitable to all men. And I pray that the wisdom of God in our life will be profitable to all in Jesus' name. We will not allow the worldly wisdom, the wisdom that comes from the world, to afflict or to affect us. So we believe that God by his grace we will overcome in jesus name so god has a way of dealing with us he desires us to have godly wisdom and this wisdom is profitable it brings crown of glory to man he brings honor to man and the man of god will be perfectly furnished in wisdom and also in knowledge amen so god standing by us Bringing about this in Ezekiel, sorry, Ezra chapter 31. Ezra 31. Reading from verse 1 to 3. There's a man of God that also have this grace, godly wisdom. And the Lord, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Or, of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom, and in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, 
So we see here that God said, I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and in knowledge and understanding and in knowledge. That means God can fill a man with these three virtues. He can fill you with wisdom. He can fill you with knowledge. He can fill you with what? Understanding. That means the three tripartite wisdom that God required a man, he can give to you. He can give to every man. So when we seek for this, God will perfect in our lives in Jesus' name. But Lia had the grace to be filled with this. And God spotted him out and told Moses, there's a man there called Bezliah. Go and fetch him out. I've anointed him already to take care of the sanctuary, to build the sanctuary, to decorate the sanctuary. Likewise, in the church, God can spot you out and can speak to your pastor, that man there, that woman there, the Spirit of God is upon him. Bring him or her. Will be a leader of this department. Be a leader of that department. Why? Because the Lord has filled you with these great virtues. May you receive it in Jesus' name. So we discover also that God is very, very much interested in man. Let's look at First Kings. First Kings chapter three. Now, this is also a case of a man, a king, that also had grace from the Lord. Let's look at verse 12. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was no like thee before thee. Neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. Now, this is Solomon. This King Solomon, who prayed and asked God for wisdom to lead his people. I think the first prayer of a man of God, oh God, give me wisdom to lead your people. I need knowledge to lead your people. I need understanding to lead your people. Then, in praying for this, you require patience. Solomon prepared his heart to seek the face of the Lord. Solomon prepared his heart to appear before the Lord. Solomon prepared his heart to cry before the Lord. Solomon prepared his heart to say, Oh God, I need wisdom. Look at the great much you are giving to me. How can I lead these people? There are, there are wise men among them. There are great men among them. But how can I lead them? There are also some people there who don't know their right from their left. They don't know anything. How will I gather these people? How will I manage these men and women in this country? Oh God, I need wisdom. And God answered him. And he said, I've given you wisdom above every other man upon the face of the earth. Above all the kings in the earth. Above all the leaders in the earth. I've given you wisdom. And I believe the, that is going to be your prayer this morning. That you need wisdom to lead those people in the church. Those souls that God has given to you. In the chapters, in the, in the unit, you need wisdom to lead them. That you not be a problem to these people. You will not be a problem to these chapters and units. You will be able to coordinate them. God giving you grace to coordinate them. And that every power that wants to come against you, by the power of God and knowledge of God upon your life, you pray those powers will be dispersed in Jesus' name. They cannot withstand your wisdom. They cannot withstand your understanding. But God will make you to stand out in their midst in Jesus' name. So Solomon prayed and God answered him. You will pray and God will answer you in Jesus' name. Then we also see that wisdom will be sought for. Like what we said in James chapter 1. James chapter 1. That the wisdom that God wants to give to man must be sought for. You can't just sleep and obtain wisdom. No. You must seek for wisdom. You must find out wisdom. You must ask God for wisdom. James 1, 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men, liberally and abraded not, and it shall be given him. Anyone that asks shall be given. When you ask today, God will give to you. In the name of Jesus. And again, you should not ask 
by wavering. You ask in faith. Verse 6. Let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. That will not be a portion in Jesus' name. You shall be stable as from today. You shall have patience to wait on the Lord. Patience is very important. Wait upon the Lord. Then again, that verse 17. And it said, Every good and perfect gift, every good gift and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lies, a whom is no verbiness, neither shadow of turning. Your, your faith and your wisdom will not turn in Jesus' name. It will not be perverse wisdom. It will not be perverse knowledge. It will not be perverse understanding. God will straighten your course. God will straighten your life. And you apply this wisdom to the benefit of the world in Jesus' name. Then again, in that same First Kings, let's go back to First Kings chapter 3. We are looking at the applied wisdom. The applied godly wisdom that God gave to a man called Solomon. Now, in, in this chapter, we see from verse 12. Again, behold, I have given according, I've, sorry, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like thee. Verse 16. Then came there two women that were hallowed unto the king and stood before him. And the women said, Oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered a child with her in the house. And it came to pass, the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also. And we were together. There was no strange stranger with us in the house save we two in the house and this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it and she arose at midnight and took my child my son from beside me why thy hand may slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom now we know the story praise the lord that these two women were hallowed they gave birth to their children and they were sleeping together you can imagine the life of hallowed and one of them because he oversleeps he don't know how to sleep and overlay the child and the child died so when he woke up to discover the child died what happened he exchanged the child and took the life child and gave the dead child to the other women of course, you know that it's not easy to judge the issue, the matter. And when they started quarreling and the matter was brought to the king, of course, how would the king judge this matter? If it were you, can you stand about this matter? Can you go about the matter? It would have been difficult as well. But with the wisdom of God, with the knowledge of God, with the ability of God, with the understanding of God, the king was able to do what? To give the final ruling, judgment. And that judgment was perfect. Hallelujah. No matter the trouble you are facing, no matter the situation you are facing, that problem will give solution to it. That problem will give solution to it. In the name of Jesus. This same, women, this same wisdom that came upon Solomon will be upon your life. Will be upon your life. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will do it for us in Jesus' name. So we trust that wisdom is a principal thing. Wisdom will guide us. Hallelujah. Then at the same time, we we'll briefly look at the following point there. Knowledge. This is God's giving grace upon man. He bestowed his quality of knowing and man was also empowered to apply his knowledge in every area of life. God, was give, God gave ability to man and grace to apply this knowledge in every area of his life not only in business 
not only with your children, not only with your family, but every aspect of your life. You have been empowered to exercise your knowledge over all this. Proverbs 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. I know we don't have fools here in Jesus' name. And you cannot be a fool because you desire discretion, you desire wisdom and knowledge. And God will give to us in Jesus' name. So verse 2 says, To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the wisdom, the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity. This is what Solomon applied. He was able to apply it and it worked for him. You apply all this and it will work for you in Jesus' name. So knowledge is powerful. Wisdom is wonderful. So when wisdom enters into your heart, you be a different man. When knowledge enters your heart, you become pleasant to others. And you are also pleasant to yourself. When knowledge enters your, your life, discretion will preserve you. When you have knowledge, you have wisdom and understanding, they will all preserve you. You're going out and you're coming in. They will preserve you. Then again, understanding shall keep you while going. Understanding will give you direction. Wisdom will give you direction. They will all preserve you. Three of them will work together to preserve you, to balance you. You will not fall. Why? Because the three are already operational in your life. It will operate better in your life in Jesus' name. So knowledge is given by God. The benefit and advantage of knowledge. We saw it in the life of Solomon. And I believe that you will equally benefit. And men around you will benefit in Jesus' name. Let's go back to James chapter 3. James 3. Verse 13. Two kinds of wisdom that God has given to man. I mean, sorry, the two kinds of wisdom we, we are seeing here. The wise wisdom and that same wisdom is called godly wisdom. Who is a wise man and endow with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation of his works with meekness of wisdom with meekness of wisdom so you discover here that the wisdom of god is powerful you must exercise it through your meekness without being meek you cannot exercise this wisdom wisdom is very important for our daily living it's important in our offices important in the church important on the street important in the vehicle if you enter vehicle how do you behave when others refuse to shift for you, uh, refuse to adjust themselves, how will you behave? When somebody talks to you in the public, how do you behave? How is your response? It's a daily affair. Wisdom is a daily affair. Knowledge is a daily affair. So you must apply it in every little response to any man. You should apply wisdom. Apply that knowledge that God has given to you. Then let's look at verse 15. He said, this wisdom descended not from, I mean, this, uh, 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 sorry, uh, verse 14. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is utterly sensual, devilish. That means the wisdom of the world is devilish. It's not to promote God. Whatever you are doing in the name of wisdom in order to, for, I mean, to enrich yourself, to do certain things for yourself, or to pass judgment against people, those wisdom is not from God. The wisdom of piracy is not from God. The wisdom to do evil things is not from God. It's from Satan. So I don't know the kind of wisdom you have been applying. I don't know the kind of wisdom you have been exhibiting in your life. But I trust that God will touch your heart. 
God will save you today. That you have the perfect wisdom, the wisdom from above, who is superior to every other wisdom. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Today we have motivational preachers. Why? They enter into the realm of knowledge and start applying this evil knowledge, sensual knowledge, sensual wisdom. And when they come, they start giving you words, giving you things, motivational words, that we, 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 we trigger your soul, we make your soul happy, and you're so excited. And when they're talking, you'll be holding them. Ah, who is this man? This is a wonderful man. But let me tell you, all those wisdom are devilish wisdom. They are joined to us, removing your mind from godly wisdom. Removing your mind from God. That at the end of the day, you love all those words. Motivational words. Even when you are preaching, 50% of your message is what? Motivational messages. Preaching. All these are not from God. And God frowns at those wisdom. So we must be transformed. Verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Look at that. Pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be treated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. In your judgment between two members in your church, how do you judge that matter? When it affects your financier in the church with somebody else that is not a financier, does not have money, how do you treat the matter? Is there no partiality in your judgment? Is there no partiality in your advice, in your counsel? Will you not justify that man that is your sponsor? Will you not give him a great seat in your house in the church? Will you not bow down several times when they come to visit you? But here is a poor man coming to visit you. Will you bow to greet him? No. Partiality. You judge within yourself. You judge among yourself. This wisdom is not of God. God said, this wisdom I'm giving to you is without what? Partiality. Without hypocrisy. And I pray that you not apply this sensual wisdom this knowledge from the pit of hell may god deliver you from such things may god give you wisdom to address issues in your church in your chapters handle the matters as god with you handling that matter that after handling matter they go they look and see say my son you are well done for applying this knowledge Wisdom, applied knowledge. Wisdom, applied understanding. You apply it in your life, in Jesus' name. So you have great responsibility. Because we trust that God will help us in Jesus' name. So your understanding is from God. In the area of judgment is from God. Judge accordingly. And God will help us to live a holy life all the days of our life in Jesus name the sons of Issachar they judge perfectly Abigail the wife of Nabal judge perfectly and say as you have seen my husband that is how she is you must not be partial are you hearing what I'm saying don't cover your husband in his crime don't cover your wife in her crime this woman was perfect in her understanding and judgment. He said, my husband, as the name son, that is how she, she is. Can any of us stand to do that our husband and wives? Will you not say because you are the pastor of the church, you want to cover your wife? I don't cover my wife either. Yes, I don't. If she does anything, I will tell her, you are wrong. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't be partial because it's your brother, it's your friend, he's giving you money to eat. Then you see rightful judgment, you divert. No, that is wrong. That's not Christianly. And that is not a holy practice of holy people of God. May God deliver us in Jesus' name. So we should apply all this. 
that a wise woman there was a case in second samuel 20 verse 16 to 22 this is a wise woman when job was to destroy the city she came to job ah, why and he raised a parable and he said you cannot destroy the mother in israel don't you know there's a mother in israel a wise woman in this place don't worry what you are seeking for i will give to you and she just went and brought the head of the man we are looking for say take battle was averted war was averted destruction was averted your wisdom will avert destruction in your family your wisdom will avert destruction in your church whatever is happening around you applied wisdom will save you and save your church and save your chapters and save your unit and save your community and save your office in the name of jesus apply this wisdom you will see the finger of god apply this wisdom you will see the grace of god apply this wisdom you will see the life of god you apply this wisdom you will see the benefit of wisdom god will help you god will raise your that ministry god will raise that chapter all the troubles in your chapters god will set to them because of the applied wisdom applied knowledge applied understanding in the name of jesus may god stand for you may god be with you through her understanding and war was averted she was a woman of intelligence successful in discretion prudent sensible good understanding coupled with wisdom in the fear of the lord men had always desired wisdom knowledge and understanding in quest for these virtues truth righteousness and true holiness have been revealed and the greatest wisdom understanding and knowledge is to depart from sin and iniquity the greatest wisdom is to depart from sin and iniquity and i trust that god will help us to depart from sin secret sin god will help us in our judgment we will not be partial in our dealing with people we should not be partial are you hearing what i'm saying wherever you are make sure you are not partial in your dealing with your brothers make sure you are not partial in relating with people and god will stand by you because god is watching every heart god is watching every soul if you are partial it will be discovered someday are you hear what i'm saying shall we rise up now seeking for god's wisdom knowledge and understanding when we seek the law the law will do that he will give them to us the law will give you wisdom we grant you understanding say oh lord i come before you this morning i've heard your word and I trust in your word. I believe in this word. That if I seek wisdom. If I seek understanding. If I seek knowledge. It will balance my Christian life. It will balance my family life. It will balance my ministry life. Oh God I call on you this morning. I want you to open your mouth and talk to the Lord. That God's grace will be upon our lives yes the grace to seek this wisdom this knowledge this ability we need it we need it wisdom is a principal thing yes let's see for it yes let's see for it wisdom wisdom applied yes wisdom applied you receive the blessings of the lord you receive the grace of God. Wisdom applied. We need wisdom to handle those matters. Those matters. Yes. Those matters. You are handling some matter before you came here. And you don't know how to handle them. All you need is wisdom. You need wisdom to handle those matters. Family problems. You have been on it for years. You don't know how to go about it. The wisdom of God is here. Talk to God. 
you have made wisdom. We need it. Applied wisdom. Yes, it will help you. It will help you. You're dealing with your fellow man. We need wisdom. Yes, in our relationship with one another, we need wisdom. Pray this morning. Pray this morning. Wisdom is the principal thing. Yes, to depart from iniquity. Yes, is the greatest wisdom. Yes, talk to the Lord. That the grace of God, the power of God, will rest upon your life. That we are different after now. That judgment you are past. That wrong judgment you are past. Ask God for wisdom. Return to that to those people. Call them together and give the right counsel. Give the right counsel. Give the right counsel between husband and wife, between children and parents, between church members, between the members of your chapter, between the members of your unit. Yes, call them back. Go back. Settle that issue. Settle that problem. Wisdom is required. Wisdom is required. Yes, it's required. We need wisdom. Yes. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. Go with patience. Go with patience. Yes, you need patience for wisdom, for knowledge, for understanding. You don't be rash in taking decision. You don't be rash in taking decision. Talk to God. Talk to the Lord. The power of wisdom. The grace of wisdom. The understanding of wisdom. Ah, wisdom in the office. Wisdom in your place of work. Wisdom in your business. Wisdom in your company. Wisdom in a group you are leading. Wisdom. Yes, everywhere. Wisdom in the kitchen. Wisdom. Yes, wisdom is crying. Wisdom is crying. Wisdom is saying, receive me. Seek me. I'll be fond of you. Seek me. Seek me. Oh, wisdom. Not be hasty in spirit. Not be hasty in spirit. Not be arrogant in spirit. Wisdom. Deal with anger. Wisdom. Deal with anger in your life. Wisdom will drive away anger in your spirit, anger in your life. Wisdom. Wisdom. It will drive away partiality. It will drive away tribalism in your judgment. You know, say because it's from your tribe, because it's your best friend. You want to cover him? No. Rebuke him. He will learn his lessons. Yes, that is true judgment. Rebuke will bring man back to God. Correction will bring man back to God. The reality of wisdom. Yes. We need it. We need it. Seek it. You will find. Look a wisdom door. You will receive it. Look. Yes. That wisdom door will be open for you. It will be open. It will be open. Wisdom. <coughs> In Jesus' name we pray. And last we say, Oh Lord, I need your grace to wait on you. To wait on you for wisdom. For knowledge, for understanding, oh God, every spirit, every hasty spirit, every hasty spirit, I come against them in my life. I need to be a patient to wait on you, Lord. Open your mouth and pray. Talk to the Lord that God 
with the grace upon the spirit of wisdom the spirit of understanding yes patient wisdom yes will not be haste will not be haste yes we need patience in every aspect of our lives wisdom will come out knowledge will come out understanding will come out discretion will be seen in our lives every worldly wisdom must go satanic wisdom must go not be applied in the church not be applied in our lives let be different wisdom pray for wisdom it's one of the principal things in the church what we require you are dealing with your fellow man that there be no partiality <clears throat> no tribalism give the right judgment stand on the truth a grace and truth he will give you in jesus name we pray and dear lord we thank you this morning we exalt you because there's not like on today. Thank for the words of wisdom. Thank for the words of knowledge. Thank for the words of understanding. That's many that will seek your face. You will release the spirit of wisdom upon them. Oh God, in this camp, release your spirit of wisdom in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, release the spirit of understanding in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, release the spirit of knowledge upon every soul here in the name of Jesus. Every power of darkness that been warring against our wisdom, that been warring against our knowledge, that been warring against our understanding, I rebuke you this morning and I cast you out in Jesus' name. Let God rule over our lives. Let the wisdom of God rule over our families. Rule over our business centers in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. We give you glory. We exalt you this morning. Because there's no like unto you. Receive all the honor and adoration. Thank you, Father. We bless you, God. For this we pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A clap of flint to the Lord. Amen. I think we want to take. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production, and spread of holiness literature and materials.
for other spiritual materials, messages, or inquiry, contact us on 0813-635-6813 and 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address holiness revival movement at gmail.com God bless you For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the
Oh, uh-huh. 